Hey, Blastar here. I'm wondering if there's more people like me. Those who grew up religious, but are also huge geeks. Into everything from sci-fi, fantasy, comic books, and especially anime. Sure, some people tell me anime is weird. Especially since I deal a lot with demons and mechas, superpowers, and magical girls. But I don't really believe that my love of anime is completely different from my love of religion and Christianity. In fact, I sometimes wonder, can I marry the two? If pastor can do sermons about movies of the summer or books that they loved, or even if you're in a black church, (laughs) some old school hip hop, what's keeping me from doing a couple of sermons about anime? And since I spent my, my Easter weekend at an anime convention, I figured now's the best time to try it. If we can make bunnies plus Bible equal Easter, maybe I can make anime plus Christianity equal pretty cool sermon. And since it is Easter Sunday, I have to start with this one topic, Jesus, since he's pretty much the reason we celebrate Easter, right? But let's not just talk about Jesus. Let's talk about us as humans and not as any humans. Let's talk about the people who have low self-esteem. So this sermon. This is for my people who suffer with low self-esteem. For those that self-worth does not come easily and have been told that they are strange, different, (laughs) unworthy. I see you. God sees you. And you're actually the hero of your own story. And this is the story of a youth who struggled against oppression and encountered the destiny to push humanity from the shadows into the bright sunlight and blue skies who stood up to stop the ascension of humanity as we became great. No, this is not the story of Jesus. This is the story of us, or the individual us. And Gurren Logan tells this story pretty well through the eyes of Simone, a young boy who is a digger. Finding a weird drill and then a weird face, he would go on to be the hope of humanity from living underground. But that destiny did not come easily. As we meet Simone in the first half of this series, he describes himself as dirty and weird. He is made fun of by the girls in his village because all he does is dig. Even though he's good at it, and digging is pretty important in his village. But Simon does not see the greatness in himself. He doesn't believe that he can do it. He wants to give up his promise to someone stronger, better, more knowledgeable than himself. Of course, that makes sense. Why should you try something new when you're only good at one thing? In his case, the stakes were pretty high. Lives could be lost if you get this wrong. The best should take the lead, not humble, dirty you. But I'm so glad that Simone had an anarchy who saw his worth. That's right, a big brother who, instead of taking a power destined for Simone, looked at Simon and told him to do the work. You know I'm talking about, Kamina. Knowing that Simone could not find the strength within himself yet to face his fears and lead them to victory against a vastly bigger and scarier opponent, Kamina did not give him some false platitudes. He didn't tell him, try your best, buddy. He didn't even say, believe in yourself. No, Kamina knowing that Simone had depended on him, had more faith in him than than Simone had in himself. And instead, he turned to Simone and said, don't believe in yourself, believe in me. Believe in the commoner that believes in you. I don't know about you, but the first time I heard that line, I was blown away. Never have I heard someone deflect my insecurities about my own self-worth and then attach themselves to how I saw myself. If I can't believe in me, then can I believe in the me that someone I care about, someone I trust, someone I honor says that they see in me? It's like the coolest kid in school looking at you and saying, you're cool, because they would know, right? It's like a professor telling you they can't wait to read your paper because they think you're brilliant and you had such great insights in class during the conversation. It's like your coach 
telling you that they're putting you in the game because they know you'll sink that shot. They've seen you in practice, and they've been doing this for years. They should know. Actually, it's like what Jesus says to his disciples, to us even today. Greater things than this you will do. Based off of John 14, 12, he says, Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the worst I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these. Wow, Jesus has some faith in us. If you look through the, the Gospels, you will see that the disciples aren't the sharpest tools in the box half the time. And they mess up a lot. They get a lot of things wrong. Both in Matthew and Mark, the disciples couldn't heal a boy who was possessed with a demon. So the father had to bring him to Jesus. And after Jesus heals the boy easily, they're like, Jesus, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus tells them, you didn't have enough faith. You didn't believe. Wow, is that really the power of belief that I can do what Jesus did and even more? And it doesn't just happen to the 12 disciples. Jesus sent out like 70 plus disciples in Luke. And they all go and they're healing people and casting out demons and doing all these great things that Jesus told them to do. I feel like today we can do the same things. And if I don't believe in myself, I know that Jesus tells me that he believes in me. And I just believe in Jesus. Who believes in me to do these amazing things? That's kind of cool, considering, I don't know, he died so that I would have the opportunity to be here today doing amazing things. Much like Hamana, if you think about it. Sure, Jesus resurrected on the third day, but when he goes up to heaven, he still imparts upon his disciples, upon the people who have been listening to him for 40 days that they can go and make new disciples. And these new disciples are continuing the legacy today. After Jesus ascends to heaven, the disciples like Peter and John are doing crazy stuff. I mean, Peter, the guy who was like, I don't know Jesus three times in the crucifix, is a guy that like is healing lame people and throwing out demons. And he even raises someone from the dead. In fact, G Peter gets his wings and believes in himself so hard after Jesus' death that when it's his turn to die, because the Romans did put Peter to death, he was like, don't crucify me. I'm not gangster enough to be crucified like Jesus. So you know what they did? They crucified him upside down. That's right. The inverted cross, not Satanism. Peter started that. I think it gives me hope today. And I hope it gives you hope as well, that no matter what we think of ourselves, there is somebody, someone who we think the world of, who really believes in what we can do. And in the end, as common as last parting words is, you don't have to believe in me anymore. Believe in yourself, because you're going to do great things. And I'm taking that to heart. So I hope everybody had a great Easter. I hope you enjoyed this message. And maybe there'll be more to come. You can always leave me comments. I prefer you kept it friendly, but it's the internet. I understand. Otherwise, maybe this anime mashup will happen a little bit more. And let me know. Do you think the Church of the Anime or Anime Church is a good name or a good idea? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Till next time, Black Star signing out.